Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Of all the things that God has done in our lives, God has been merciful. Many of us have received all kinds of breakthroughs. And so we come with that seed of sacrifice. Number two, um, it is part of your commitment towards kingdom advance. I believe that believers have a responsibility to stand to see that the purposes of God be advanced. There is no magic about what happens to the resources that believers give. It adds to the overall resources that are used for kingdom advance. And so it's always an opportunity for believers to sow knowing that for every soul that is saved, life transformed, and every contribution towards kingdom advance, it is recognized in heaven. Number three, it is a prophetic connection um, as a way of communicating your expectations to God. I believe that with all my heart. When you connect with understanding, you release your faith, believing God for that which you would do. Uh, let me tell you something. I have discovered that believers are not greedy, globally speaking. I used to think believers are greedy, but I don't believe that anymore. The problem usually is the integrity with the management of the resources of the kingdom when people sow seeds when they commit resources and you know people divert seeds that are meant for kingdom activities into personal um you know personal gains and all of that this is usually where people are discouraged to give and all of that but i believe that people always give and will give when it is number one non-manipulative non-manipulative giving from the standpoint of manipulation i tell you it's a waste of time because there is no reward for you praise the lord giving under threat to give otherwise this it's it's not it's non manip it's a manipulative kind of giving there's no blessing the bible says if there be first a willing heart a willing mind are we together so it is important by god's grace we are people of integrity, uh, even as a ministry. All of the blessings of God you see upon my life and upon our lives have come as products of a thorough understanding of the systems, the financial systems of the kingdom, alongside the grace to appropriate the keys that should be to make for the blessings of the Lord upon our lives. You can prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity and um, and with honor and this is what you see if there is anything at all that looks like the blessing of god upon our lives it is credited to the intelligence of the ways of god that makes for that possibility praise the lord hallelujah so please um we're challenging and calling on everyone businesses individuals our friends partners sons daughters ministries um, all around the world who follow us sincerely as the Lord grants you grace um, do well to support do well to give please understand that what you are doing is not a donation what you are doing is a connection with understanding 
um, you donate to a social welfare platform. This is a spiritual platform that brings real results when the principles are engaged with understanding. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Let's pray in advance for this end of year sacrifice. Lord, we thank you. It's an honor and a privilege to give. It's an honor and a privilege to sow. And we stand in agreement with the millions around the world who have been blessed, lifted, touched, transformed, saved, healed in and through this ministry. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity you are providing for us to be part of Kingdom Advanced. We are grateful for the participation of the saints. And Lord, we pray that you who is the supervisor of your laws, may you bless and reach everyone according to their needs in the name of Jesus. Every seed that is sown in honor to this, um, this announcement, I pray that it will return to the givers a thousandfold in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless everyone who is a faithful giver. May the Lord bless everyone who is a participant and a partner with what God is doing. And may we all go from glory to glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Are you ready for the word? Just a brief admonishment. Acts chapter 2. Well, thank you Jesus. Acts chapter 2. We we'll start from verse 36. The Lord put this in my heart and tonight's teaching will really, really bless you. It's an admonishment, but it will bless us. Acts chapter 2 from verse 36. This, this, is, this is Apostle Peter um, at the upper room. Now, this is the first official salvation message after the Holy Ghost came. Therefore, let all the house of Israel, please follow carefully, know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. 37. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter is responding now, 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 39 is where my message is coming from. For the promise, let's read together. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call one more time uh-huh even as the lord this is a very interesting scripture because this is the first salvation message and peter is letting the body of believers then and prophetically everyone know that the promises of god this included is not for certain individuals he says the promise is unto you number two unto your children number three unto all those who are far off was talking about the gentile nation now then he says as many as our Lord shall call. Very powerful. Very, very powerful revelation. The promise is for all. Not for few. The promise, not for men of God. The promise, not for Americans. Not for British people. Not for Africans. This is a powerful revelation because until we understand that in Christ there is a central platform that allows all and sundry access to the possibilities of the kingdom are we together now the proposition that makes it look as though there are individuals who have been isolated from the experience of the kingdom is a very dangerous communication the promise please keep that scripture for us is first for you everybody says for me then for your children and then to all that are far off even as many as the lord will call second scripture acts chapter 10 please 
We'll start from verse 34 to 35. I'm establishing first and foremost the centrality and the neutrality of God's operation when it has to do with the saints. That there is an equal platform for the saints to be able to partake of the reality of the life and the power of the Christ. Regardless of background, regardless of sentiments, that when we come to Christ, there is a level playing ground that allows any believer who is interested to be the partaker of the reality of the experience of the kingdom. Acts chapter 10, we'll start from verse 34. Now, Peter, this was after the Holy Ghost fell upon the Gentile nation. Are we still together? Say amen. amen. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth. I perceive that God is what? No respecter of persons. In other words, there is no favoritism as it were with him. Next verse. But in every nation, Africa, hear this. In every nation, including Africa. In every nation, including Nigeria. He that feareth him and walketh righteousness is accepted with him. That means that every possibility in the kingdom is for the taking of all. Please understand this. That in the economy of God, there is no default preferences that attempts to victimize any individual. Not on spiritual grounds, not on grounds of career, not on grounds of maybe wealth and all of that. There is no such thing with God. The reality of the Christ life puts a neutral ground for anyone to be able to become everything destined by God. This is a revelation as we end the year. It's, it's, it's a reminder for some and it's a revelation for others. Two more scriptures. Romans chapter 10 and verse 12. Romans chapter 10 and verse 12. The Bible says, Apostle Paul now is teaching, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord, everyone please read with me. The same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. The same Lord rich unto an American like he is unto an African. Rich unto the south as he is unto the north as he is unto the east. Are we together now? I'm establishing the fact that everyone's destiny please listen to me in christ everyone's destiny in christ depends on their knowing god and they are activating the truths of the kingdom there is nobody who excels by default there is nobody who succeeds by default when it has to do with dealings the dealings of men with god there is a level praying ground for everyone the last scripture Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. You know, we come from all kinds of families. And some of us have been indoctrinated by our sociological contexts into believing that we are disadvantaged. Listen to me very carefully. You may never understand how destructive that understanding is. That you sustain a thinking that there are people who never believe God can speak to them directly. There are people who never believe that they can know God on their own. There are people who never believe that they can experience the power of God and the grace of God. There are people who never believe they can prosper in this life. No. We have all kinds of subliminal communications that have come from our backgrounds that continue to plant dangerous perspectives. I've done a lot of teachings on mindsets and strongholds and this is one of such teaching he said let us therefore come boldly everybody say boldly unto the throne of grace let us not let some everyone come boldly to the throne of grace that we as a corporate body may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need the throne of grace is accessible by everyone and anyone in Christ in fact including sinners 
so the bible says let us all come to that throne of grace are you getting what i'm saying now these four scriptures show us the centrality and the neutrality of god's dealings with men in god's economy there are no superiors to others by default follow me closely there are no favorites as it were the same lord is rich unto all the bible talks in the book of jude i think of what he called the common salvation common salvation there's no special blood that speaks for joshua selman or speaks for the the uh, what the, the president of any nation no it is the same blood that was shed for everyone are we together now yes there is no individual who can rise to the fullness of the potentials in christ when you believe that there is a sense of inferiority in fact this is Kenyon's definition of righteousness he defines it as the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of guilt inferiority and then condemnation the key word there is inferiority that when i stand before god and you stand before god based on that which has been provided for by the christ we stand from the same platform please believe this now it is true that culturally speaking if you are born by a millionaire you are not necessarily the same sociologically speaking with someone who was born somewhere in the village are we together there is an economic advantage if you are born in a nation where the government for instance is more strategic in nation building you already have an environment there are nations today when you are born in you will only need a few visas for the rest of your life because of the advantage of that territory there are others when you are born in even your neighboring country you will need your passport stamps to just cross over because of the social economic disadvantage that comes with those territories are we together in Christ the same Lord is rich unto all so when I stand and I see God doing mighty things with Benny Hinn, when I stand and I see God doing mighty things with the millionaires and billionaires when I stand and I see God doing great things with men of God I am inspired but not inspired to the point where you will now rate yourself as second class are you understanding what I'm saying listen to me on every champion and every world changer has found a way of indoctrinating themselves not arrogantly so but truthfully so into an understanding that i stand in a platform through christ that opens me up to any advantage possible on earth do you know what it means to be a child of god being a child of god is the most superior most superior honor that any man can get on earth the second honor you can get on earth is to be the son of a monarch or to be a monarch the third will be to be an ambassador or a politician at the highest level there are cadres of honor the highest of them is to be called a child of god behold what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us in that we are called this you know we just say it carelessly i'm a child of god donald trump's son needs only few assignments in his life are we together now because a major part of it has been solved look at this our lovely children that we just dedicated the truth is that there are some struggles they will not have in their life again till jesus comes remember we are the bridge between the old and the new we have been that sacrifice that have you know labored for people i'm a child of god it's a powerful revelation the monarch of the universe is my father let that revelation touch you when you say god is my father many people are used to abusing the name god for some people god is a bottle of minerals for some people god is an idol with a stone so when you say god is my father it doesn't carry the weight i'm no longer slave to fear 
I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. So you may come from a background that has no advantage. It is true that your earthly father may not be able to help you. It is true that your heavenly, your earthly mother or whatever it is, the disadvantage, but the consciousness that the monarch of the universe has decided to become my father and I am his child is a revelation that you must have. It instantly gives you a sense of superiority, not from a negative standpoint. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. But you move around knowing that the earth is your estate when i travel to any region i expect the same thing to happen regardless of location because i am still within the domain of my father now when you travel to other parts of the world you will do left hand driving others right hand driving when you pass through other places in the world because of the system of government sociologically speaking you are mandated to do certain things but the awareness that the earth is the lord's that means in reality there is no disadvantage because wherever you are located and situated within this territory it is the domain of this monarch called god are we together now very powerful so the bible says that we come boldly this is the first thing i want to establish the promises of god not just the promise of the holy spirit the promises of god that are written in scripture the promises to prosper the promises to heal the promises to lift the promises to bless listen the promise of influence like god spoke to us genesis 17 and verse 6 i will make you exceeding fruitful he said and that kings will come out of your loins nations will come out of you it's not necessarily is it was to abraham but galatians 3 29 says if ye be christ's then are ye abraham's seed and heirs are according to the promise everybody is a spiritual jew in christ and that reality has brought us to a point where there is no disadvantage i pray that god will help you understand what i've said it is not our background no it is not our sociological context it is an understanding of the neutrality the centrality so understand this tonight even as we prepare to live and travel to different regions there is nobody called by god to a life of failure bishop oyedeko said every calling in christ is a high calling everybody say a high calling yes there are no low callings in christ nobody is called to a life of failure mediocrity defeat no we are called to a life of excellence we are called to a life of grace we are called to a life of influence we are called to a life where the bible says that through the church the manifold many-sided wisdom of god will be displayed to principalities and powers if you're with me please say amen Now, but strangely so, and I want to pay attention now, the Bible seemed to be very open about individuals that God decided to carve out a name for. And I want to show you the secrets so that we can tap into this grace and into this possibility. The first is in Genesis chapter 18 from verse 17 to 19 god seems to talk to abraham in a strange way and the bible records that abraham was called the friend of god not many people in life are ever called the friend of god we're reading from verse 17 down to 19 this will bless you look at me he says and the lord said look up please shall i hide from abraham that thing which i do 18 seeing that abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and that and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him is a question 19 for i know him mm. 
that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him Abraham the friend of God it is true that there is a central ground in dealing with God but it seems as though certain individuals were able to route certain pathways with God that now began to create a bias in God's dealings with them to make God himself now start giving them names the name son of God child of God is a generic name for everybody it defines the centrality of God's love but that certain individuals went a step further with God and they started earning for themselves titles that represented special attentions titles that represented certain covenants so from that neutral standpoint you can start growing yourself into specific possibilities with God are you getting what I'm teaching tonight so for Abraham he became the friend of God and John chapter 15 please 15 and 16 very powerful scripture John 15 he said you have not chosen me look up but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit he's talking about fruitfulness and that your fruit should remain and whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name he may give it to you next verse he says these things no no go to verse 16 oh dear did I miss something yes 15 let's start from 15 15 and then 16 and 17 henceforth that's what I'm looking for I call you not servants now it's not an insult to be called a servant of God a servant of God is not a slave a servant of God is one who has submitted himself to serve the purposes of God I know sometimes we say servant I'm not a servant if you mean that contrasting sonship you are right but you will understand as you grow with God that the hallmark of sonship is servanthood are we together so to be called a servant of God is not an insult we are bond servants Paul uses the word bond slaves but not unto servitude in a negative way henceforth I call you not servants okay for the servant now look at this this is oh dear oh dear may God open our eyes to see in the name of Jesus notice the proof of servant is ignorance of certain information knowledge it says for a servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth it says but I have called you friends what is the advantage of friendship for all things that I have heard of my father I have made known to you the advantage of friendship with God is the privilege of access to spiritual knowledge you know you are a friend of God to the degree to which he bends over backwards to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom the truths of the kingdom the Bible calls them the secret things of God this one is not for everybody is God helping us tonight Abraham my friend shall I hide this from him shall I hide this from him a servant does not know he may obey religiously without knowing but a friend is privy to information God is about to do certain things and he say no Abraham is my friend this is powerful so God calls Abraham his friend so I can know that I am growing just from sonship into friendship by God by the depth to which his fortitude to share the secrets of the kingdom and you know that dominion in this kingdom is a function of the secrets of the kingdom that we access It's called the hidden wisdom of God by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness they that love me and seek me early will find me Acts chapter 13 we're still building on this Acts chapter 13 from verse 21 to 23 
another man carves out a title for himself although at a level playing ground we are all children of God or we are all creations of God we now see another man who went out of his way and afterwards Peter is speaking now they desired a king and God gave unto them Saul the son of Kish a man of the tribe of Benjamin by the space of 40 years next verse and when he had removed him he raised up unto them read with me David to be their king uh-huh to whom also he gave testimony stop who testified God God is about to give a testimony that I have found David the son of Jesse help me a man after my own heart what qualifies him to be a man after my own heart his insistence to see that my will is always fulfilled now notice how these people end their titles most times we just know their titles but I'm showing you what they did how they went far when it has to do with the friend of God he's saying you have done something to me that forbids me from hiding things from you I give you access to knowledge as proof of friendship when it now has to do with a man after his heart he's saying I have discerned that this man will die doing my will and I have given him I've given him a title of a man after my own heart God is testifying not a prophet a man who pursues my heart not who pursues the throne don't forget the man is a king and yet God does not talk about his throne he will abandon his throne to seek the heart of God and God says this man is a man after my heart why because of his insistence to see that my will is being done next verse of this man's seed hath God of this man's seed that God according to his promise raised up unto Israel a savior Jesus this is his reward for being a man after God's heart God insisted that your seed must participate in the lineage that will bring David was not the only man after the order of you know God and all of that but he is he is called the seed of David thou son of David not thou son of Rahab not thou son of Boaz not thou son of Naomi they all played their roles but out of those people God selected one man to become to personify his passion towards a man are you learning something tonight a man after my heart a friend of God this is a very powerful revelation now let me share with you something very very powerful um, and, and, and this is where I think and I believe that many believers are not properly mentored and as we go on break it's important to remind and re-emphasize this that in the dealings of God man will always have a role to play in actualizing prophecy please listen carefully that the systems of God work twofold one the dimensions that are finished from God's standpoint and then number two through the experience of alignment and obedience we make manifest that which has been finished in our lives Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12 Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12 it says wherefore Paul is admonishing the church in Philippi wherefore my beloved as ye have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence hear what he says walk out your own not your neighbor not your child not your wife not your husband work out your own salvation and give it a level of diligence with fear and trembling work out your own prosperity work out your own intimacy with the holy spirit 
work out your own ensure that you press into God so much that he's forced to find a name for you he calls Abraham a friend of God he calls Jacob the one he names it after a generation of intimacy and he's saying listen you have a responsibility to press until until you give him no rest the Bible says until he establishes Jerusalem there is a way you can wear God out if I can use that word through your passion and your intimacy he will brand his relationship Relationship with you and give it a name that defines his unique attention towards you work out your own salvation you will read about prosperity and never enter into it you may read about divine health and never enter into it now listen because this is a serious problem with Africa the awareness of things like the finished work of Christ which is true has when not properly balanced has provided a platform for a lot of irresponsibilities in believers and the ability to sustain the fortitude to press as an act of faith it's not there so we have people who just sit down and want everybody pray for me be wealthy for me be prosperous for me and that fortitude that participatory effort is not there are we together now so many people want to know the Holy Spirit and they think the key to knowing the Holy Spirit is to receive an impartation from a man who knows the Holy Spirit. What you are going to receive from that impartation is a ladder, a ladder that you will climb. Hello? A ladder that you what? Climb. You will climb it through your prayer. You will climb it through your relationship. You will climb it through the sacrifice of the instructions God will give you. That is not for everybody, it's for only you. You are about to eat and God says, turn the plate upside down. You are fasting for one week. He said, God, is it for everybody? He said, no, it's for only you. He said, God, why me? I mean, scripture. He says, I thought you want a name. A name that defines the extent of my intimacy with you. This is the pathway that leads to such a possibility. Now, there are rewards when you contend that much. Because you will, I mean, in physically now, we have what we call regular treatment of guests, whether in hotels, airports, whatever. We have what is called priority treatment. Now, the Nigerian government does not allow favoritism. But the various sacrifices of people have forced to have a lounge, a business lounge, a general place where people sit down. All those things are not favoritisms. They are a way of rewarding the contribution of those people to nation building. So in as much as there is a level playing ground, there is something you and God can do that makes it unfair for God to generalize his dealings with you that from that time is a covenant you create that makes it impossible for God to deal with you the way he deals with everyone this is true it's a very powerful mystery that I show you work out your own salvation Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. It is he that gives you the power to get well. A lot of believers start jumping. In the name of Jesus, I will never be poor. You are getting poor. You are seeing it. God is, your poverty is a report card. God is telling you, you are missing something. I will never be poor. I'm not being sarcastic. And you find out that a lot of people, and then here and there, we just browse through the laws. Okay, what and what should I know? Okay, tithing, giving, I should do business, I should do this. And then you just do one or two things and find out that nothing changes. And at a point, you just say, Kai, this Nigeria yourself man must work and you know all of this we find obvious excuses and then things never change but there are people who will will you will see them burn the candle in the days of my youth when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle when his light shined upon my head there is a light that shines upon your head there is the one that shines upon your feet the one that shines upon your head gives you illumination it says there is a spirit in man if you only have the light that shines on your feet you will keep walking but let me tell you the truth you will need the one that grants you access to knowledge are, are you getting what i'm teaching you now yes hmm. work out your own salvation any ministry that grows is worked at you know a lot of people sometimes respectfully people see me and say wow apostle god is doing mighty things in your life and I say yes he is and I, I really thank him and they, ah you are anointed though 
And you know, sometimes I'm tempted to say, I, I hear you are carrying the anointing of the generals. And I'm tempted to say, are they my relatives? How did that happen? You see, this, this is the question we need to ask. Our God has favored you. God has favored Koinonia. My brothers and my sisters, behind everything that works is somebody working it. Working it with diligence. Working it with passion. Working it with zest. Behind every business that works, it is favor. Every house is built by some man, but God is still the builder. It's a mystery. This issue of being a worker this language walk believers don't like it the men the moment you mention walk people don't like, why must i walk oh dear genesis chapter 2 after god creates man and woman he now comes to take clay god the creator who speaks and creates used his hand not his mouth alone when you read chapter 1 alone you are deceived because that's where he spoke and created it in the realm of the spirit you must go to chapter 2 and see god the walker not just god the speaker it takes more than speaking to build a destiny your hands must be soiled you will put your hands down and make it happen there are people around just looking for impartation looking for cheap prophecy and there is a place for those things but it is only activated whilst you walk whilst you walk hallelujah many people are going to remain poor it's not it's not a negative prophecy and my heart pains me while i say this many people are going to remain mediocre in their life many people may never sustain the level of influence and grace that it takes to birth the purposes of god generationally and it is not necessarily because god decided to use others it is your individual commitment elisha was never supposed to be a prophet elisha was a farmer but he followed Elijah and said I don't care what you are going to do with me oh, I must carry so they were already sons of the prophet the next prophet should come out of them but someone said I need I, I, I can't die farming I started farming but I will follow you until something comes upon my life we define our realities by the unashamedness to pursue the keys of the kingdom until something comes from heaven to your life I will never be the same, I've touched your grace, my life will change. I will never be the same, I've touched your grace, my life will change. I will never be the same, I've touched your grace, my life finances with fear and trembling man of god sit down work out your ministry work out your sermons don't just wait for an impartation that will teach you verses open your bible mark them write them down when others are sleeping wake up there is the labor dimension of greatness no impartation will replace it you don't sit down and casually fast yourself the way you like into uncommon anointings. You are joking. You pray once in a while, when you want, one hour per year, two hours per year. No. Buy the books. Read your way to excellence. Use your diligence to create a space for yourself in destiny. My life will change. Eh? My life must change. My life will change. Eh? My life will change. I will never be the same. I've touched his grace. My life must change. I will.
my life will change my life must change it my life will change my life will change please sit down second peter chapter 2 we read from verse 4 down to 10 the verse of emphasis is verse 10 please listen my brothers and my sisters this is a message to the body of christ we must be careful we are missing a very major key the dimension of spiritual diligence it cannot be bought there are certain wells you must dig by yourself africa likes prophecy we like impartation we like to receive but there are wells that must be dug there are there are fountains that must be broken it's a sacrifice the price is death are we together go to verse 8 go to verse 8 second peter 1 for if these things be in you look at this now and abound they make that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ nine but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins ten wherefore the rather he says brethren give diligence to make your calling and your election sure it is true you are called but prove it it is true you are called but give the level of diligence that makes your calling and your election sure it is true you are a prophet but prove it it is true you are an apostle but prove it it is true that god has raised you to be a voice but obtain grace to prove it give diligence 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 in prayer diligence in the study of the word diligence in the sacrifice of compliance listen let me tell you real success is not at a platter of gold at any level whether it is spiritual success whether it is financial success whether it is grace and influence it is a sacrifice of continual press as your insistence is what makes life open the gate for you is God speaking to us this is where men are separated from boys this is where what provides the disparity in ministry this is what provides the disparity in business this is what provides the disparity in the advantages that we command in our lives I've had the privilege and the opportunity to talk with a few very great people and I am amazed at the silent sacrifices of these things these people when you see a wealthy man all you see is the affluence and you see the money until you find out the sacrifices that go on when you see a man of god you may just see the miracles and the signs and the wonders until you see the sacrifices that go on when you see a great person even politicians it's amazing that those people don't sleep two o'clock three a.m they are organizing meetings there are men of god who organize vigils they sleep by five six and by eight they are awake to attend to programs whoever told you that this thing just comes easy is a sacrifice it says to be diligent someone will have to obtain that grace today wishing and hoping and believing that just laying on of hands and all of that people are lucky no there are many platforms of advantage like prophetic connections like all of these kinds of things but none of them will replace the track record of sustained diligence hallelujah diligence this is what i've learned in my life as i have studied different people in ministry and then other platforms of life i have tried to look for what is the 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 impediment what is the one factor that seems to cancel out every effort because people do things 
But I found out that most people are not diligent. Most people are hopeful. Most people are prayerful. Most people are very futuristic. But the ability to stamp your feet and say, I will walk this thing in the name of Jesus until it works. Ministry must work. Doors must open. By the price of diligence, the labor dimension. Jesus said, my father walked hitherto, I walk. My father walks and I walk. To the point that even seated at the right hand of the father, he's still engaged, making intercession for the saints. Many African nations, respectfully speaking, we have missed on the price of diligence, spiritual diligence, socioeconomic diligence, the diligence of mentorship, the diligence of the sacrifice of breaking these grounds until the fountains open. Can I be honest with you and submit to you? Next year will come and go. Year after next will come and go. Another year will come and go. A decade will come and go. Your lifetime will come and go until you draw yourself and say, look, I am ready to walk this thing. Thank God for prophetic words. They are not a lie. But they only work for those who walk. Prophetic word does not work for those who hear. It works for those who walk. Diligent. Is God speaking to us tonight? Now, let me share with you one key to add to your diligence or so, and then we'll just rush to pray. I have found out. Now, I don't claim to have known God for too long, but I have enjoyed a little bit of his presence. And let me tell you something I found out with God. The single look up the single most important factor that governs the dealing of god with a man is the state of your heart the purity and the truthfulness of the state of your heart is the master key to working with god write it down There are many systems that continue to build men in the kingdom. But listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. There is nothing of God and of worth that will ever happen to a man, a people, a nation whose hearts are not pure towards God and whose hearts are not true towards God. The motivation and the motif of your heart vetoes your prayer life vetoes your fasting vetoes your obedience no matter what you do with god you are not ready to start with god until he is able to x-ray your heart the purity and the sincerity of your heart is the foundational platform of doing business with god you have to understand this there are many believers that ignore this and we do a lot of other things we do business we fast we pray we do ministry but i have discovered in my work with god and from scripture that god is obsessed with knowing the truthfulness of the state of the heart of a man and i've preached many messages along this line please get them and listen to them see the great in this kingdom are not necessarily the most diligent the great in this kingdom are not necessarily as it were the closest people with god but there is something i know about god the purity of a man's heart is a force that magnetizes all of god to you the state of your heart why do you want to prosper why do you want anointing why do you want to be a president why do you want to be a governor why do you want to be a man of god why do you want to be a business mogul do you know for many believers this is where the real corruption lies that the motif and the motivation intrinsically is not right I know several men of God who will do anything within scripture to get power. They have the stamina to fast for as long. They have the stamina to pray. But the truth is that intrinsically, God has not found a space for himself in their motif. 
if there is one secret about my life I tell you this and I say it before God and I say it before you if there is one secret it is that if I prefer that I go to be with the Lord if God cannot find a space for himself in my heart and in my motive it's not just about anointing listen it's not just about prosperity and influence you know many times when i travel and people are receiving me and the honor the whole paraphernalia of honor and everything and i see people admiring and i just nod my head i say oh dear oh dear may god have mercy and grant us grace to reorient our understanding because this is some of these flamboyant things when we see we are we are caught up and we go and say no me too i must be rich i must be blessed and we start fasting already your motif has come everything and I if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men I will draw all men I want to marry why I want children why I want increase in ministry why listen it is not a difficult thing for God to step in and help men it is within God's power to lift men riches and honor come from him the influence and the power and the grace comes from him the problem is the state of our hearts the greatest prayer therefore is not even intercession for souls the greatest prayer is not binding witches and wizards the greatest prayer is not deliverance from enemies the greatest prayer is the prayer that turns your heart into a throne the throne where he can be seated the prayer that can turn your heart into a throne is a prayer god cannot ignore please koinonia listen to me these are my final words to us as we prepare to wrap up the year there are people who God loves them as savior to all but doing the business of destiny it has not started until that death happens so sometimes when people come and say apostle I want an impartation I want grace with all it's a privilege to be able to do the things that we do for the kingdom but I know that I'm wasting my time I've read books on wealth and prosperity. I've read books on church growth. I've read books on influence, territorial dominion. At a point in time, I had to appreciate the books, but I closed them. I said, Lord, there must be a secret. And that's when he told me that the price for all of me is all of you. The price for all of me is not all of your brain. The price for all of me is not all of your singing. The price for all of me is not all of your worship. The price for all of me is all of you. Is God speaking to us? All of you. All of you. All of you. Now, let me tell you this. It is not unusual for a generation to not believe you. So don't think it is strange. My loved ones don't believe me. You are not the first. It is all right. A generation does not believe me. Nothing is believable till the results speak. Please understand this. But that price of death continues to be. And you see, the thing with death is you don't die once. It's Jesus that died once. The saints die every day. Hello? Jesus died once and for all because of the character of what he was doing. The atonement. You are not dying to atone. You are dying to yield. You are dying to align. The death is part 24 hours. The moment today is gone, you start the death of tomorrow. The moment tomorrow is gone, you start the death. For every dimension of death, there is a corresponding glory. The day you are tired, God will not force you. But he will show you that don't then ask for this dimension of glory when you are not willing to continue. Yeshua HaMashiach Komina Nakane Yeshua Amashia Komi na na kane Komi na na kane Ya Yesu Komi na na kane Komi na na kane Yeshu Amashia Komi na na kane Yeshua Hamashiach One more time
Hamashiach. Let God find a dead vessel and you see the possibilities that can come out. Show me a man who has vowed to continue to die. I show you a glory that excels. Show me a people that continue to die. Our generation does not like the language of death because every time we talk of death, it spells inconvenience, it spells discomfort, it spells going out of it. Means that sometimes God will strip you of everything you is a price for the glory, no matter how much impartation. Is a price for the glory. You are not just going to lay hands on the sick and say in Jesus name, stand up, I'm a member of Koinonia. You are right. But let me tell you, when it comes to the depth of the dealings of God generationally, you will need to die generationally. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Please listen very carefully. There are people that God will give you instructions. Empty your account. There are people God will tell you 80% of all your wealth for the next two years. Keep giving it. You say, Lord, why? He said, because you said you want to be a kingdom financier. God, I said, I, I thought I should have. He says, I want to give you a revelation of there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. You, are, you know it as a memory verse, but I'm leading you through a pathway that makes it an experience for you. Lord, I want you to anoint me. Grant me the grace that speaks across territories. And he says, you really want that? Yes, God, let's go. And you start the journey. And for starters, he says, give everything you have in your life. He said, God, I didn't hear you well. Give everything you have. Your reputation, your wealth, your everything, your clothes, your honor, give it away. That is the price. It's what he told the rich man. He said, go and sell everything you have. Follow me. The man said, no, 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 Jesus, this one is so much authentic spiritual power does not just come by impartation alone it comes by death it comes by death lord i'm trusting god for the grace for illumination revelation but your mind is full of many things you must die to give it space and when there is space then the oil can come and the seeing eye can be given to you please listen to what i'm telling you remember my message the same Lord is rich unto all, but by certain sacrifices, men have ascended this ladder and they have given, they have branded their dealings with God so that he has been forced through their sacrifices to no longer deal with them as he deals with men. This is the hand of God and this is the way he works. Scattered across the body of Christ, are different individuals different territories who have ascended different dimensions of ladders in the spirit and god has defined certain possibilities to them there are churches and ministries when you enter there you must prosper even before you finish learning all the laws at least you will prosper to a point where you will be surprised you will know that i have no part in this because you are now a partaker of a covenant god has vowed a vow by the sacrifices of certain people Please listen to me, brothers and sisters. When you walk with God at a general level, you will go to heaven, but you will not do much. These are not even the people Satan is looking for. Satan will come and pass you. You will call him, he will still leave you. He's looking for people. There are people he's looking for desperately. Where are these ones that want to die? Where are these ones whose life is no longer their own? Where are these people who want to experience the anointing in another dimension? Where are these ones who want the power and the grace of God? Where are these ones who want the influence of nations? There is nothing that can be done about a man who has chosen to die the last enemy to be destroyed is death and when a man has chosen to die it's over Boko Haram are a threat because of their willingness to die not to leave when you want to leave you are in trouble you are only free when you are ready to die Kane. <laughs> Yeshua 
Yeshua HaMashiach. One more time. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live is a mystery. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. That whatever it will cost me to die, I will die. Not for the sake of ministry, not for the sake of money, not for the sake of titles. That prayer to search my heart, try my thought, is a powerful prayer. It's a prayer you must pray for the rest of your life in this side of God's kingdom. The heart that cries for all of God, not more of God, all of God, not more of God, all of God. He will, he will come more and more, but the goal is for all of him to be transfused into you. The secret to ministry is not invitations. The secret to ministry is not a crowd, it's not a church, it's not eloquence and oratory. The secret to ministry is not even the loyalty of men to serve you. The secret is death, genuine, continual death. I died yesterday. You are joking. You die daily. I died last week. No, sir. You die daily. You are dying today. You will die next week. A time will come when you truly will not have any life on your own. These are the ones that step their feet upon the soil of nations. And like the waters, it will pass heath and teeter. And you are wondering, are these men gods? They are men. But death translated them into another dimension. Please hear me, my brothers and my sisters. More than Bible study. More than mentorship. More than fasting. More than prayer. More than training your skills. The real secret is to die. After 30 years as Christ tarries, I will still be preaching this thing I'm saying. If you don't die, you cannot live. The way to live is to die. To die to yourself. To die to your ego. To die to your desires. It's a journey. A journey that until the day you see his face, you don't stop. I die daily it is the price for carrying the anointing it is the price for carrying grace you can die to a point where it does not make any difference whether God keeps his wealth in heaven or he keeps it in your account you have so died is the same thing whether the money is in your account or is in heaven in God's mind is the same because any day he makes a demand it will go a time will come where whether the anointing is in heaven or the anointing is on your life is the same because God has guaranteed that you will die seeing to it that his purposes be established this that I share with you is the price when this is settled then that's when every other thing makes sense your prayer life your fasting even your obedience to scripture believe me when I tell you all that is nonsense when you have not died is the reason why we will keep fasting we will keep praying we will keep quoting scripture you see someone's car you go and lie down on it and say oh god please open my door and you are right it should bless you but it will not bless you because you are speaking from a platform of a decadence of heart yes you are. listen we give 
we give breaks in the ministry not just to allow us rest it's been a busy year for everyone but the goal is not just to rest and catch up we are giving you one month so that it will help you die well die enough to carry the glory of 2020 die enough to carry the power of 2020 die enough to carry the voice and the mantle of 2020 that lord i am dead but not dead enough to carry the next glory dead but not dead enough to carry the mantle the power dead but not dead enough to be trusted with kingdom influence at that point the one week now you are not going to go to god as a worker you are not going to god as apostle joshua selman you are not going to god as a leader you are going to God as one who is desirous of his use. And now you can have the time to lock yourself. You can have the time to stay with God and stay till you die. While your flesh cries, you say, God, don't pity it. Forget about the tears of my flesh. Keep the death going. Just keep the death going. The death, your ego, say, forget about my ego. Keep the death going. Ah, my money, forget about the money. Keep the death going. Show me that man and I show you a man to fear in this life. A man that has mastered death. I die daily, Paul said. So he got to a point where he could say for me, oh, I don't know whether it is to go or to stay. I have conquered the interface of these limitations. But for your sake, I will stay. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, you've heard me say it again. There are virgin dimensions in the spirit. Compared to where God is taking us, we are only starting. And we must trust God for grace to not be complacent. The secret is to turn to God and sit down and die. The applauds of men can deceive. Men can clap you and stop you from entering tomorrow. This one thing I do, the Bible says, forgetting the things that are behind. You must train yourself to forget. Both success and failure can do the same thing. It can kill you. So you lay it aside and say, Lord, what is the price for the next level? And he says, death. And he say, come. Like a doctor about to perform a surgery on a patient, let it go. Let the ministration of that death continue. And you are staying with God. It will tell you for the next three days, let no food enter your mouth. There is a surgery spiritually. And even the slightest meal can interrupt it. And he said, Lord, ordinarily I will want to eat. But for the joy that is before me, let me endure the cross and even despise the shame. And in the midst of that pain, suddenly you will meet an anointing. You will meet a grace. And God will tell you this anointing is what I'm releasing on earth for the next 15 years. That means whoever does not have this type of anointing cannot be featured in my program and now that you have died enough here you go pick it up and you pick it and like like the pages of a book another dimension of you is open and whilst you think you have exhausted you will see another dimension they go from strength to strength this is my message not just to go and celebrate Christmas and up and down. Not just to go gisting and wasting our time. Listen, times with God are times of death. Now is not the time to go and be clapping for yourself in the secret place. It's foolishness. Great men are great because they forget their crowns. Great men are great because they forget their trophies. Great men are great because they forget their achievements. Create an immunity in your room that does not hear, let you hear the, the clappings of men. While they are clapping, you are dying. The clap increases, you are still dying. And the flesh tells you, have you not attained enough? And the Spirit of God says, you lie. Not for the mantle of a nation. Keep dying. Keep dying. You will see the effulgence of the power of God in your life. And men will look at you and say, are you a human being or you are a spirit? When you go back, God will say, can we continue? You are back from the meeting. You, some of you will go home and God will give you instructions. Organize crusades. Organize little meetings. And while you are doing all of those, people will look at you and say, ah, this koinonia. And while they are talking, you want to come back to life and the spirit will say, no, not at this point. Keep dying. The door to life is death. The door to the throne is the cross. 
the door to the cross then the grave you must die it is the one key I have learned in my life fear a man who dies don't fear a man who died now I beseech ye brethren by the mercies of God that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto God which is your reasonable act of worship there are times that God does not want songs no there are times that God does not want prayer there are times God does not even want dancing around there are times God does not want reading any Bible there are times God just wants the sacrifice of death it will rise as an incense past the second heavens where demons are demons don't need your death they cannot do anything with your death it will pass them they can't cast it they can't kill it it passes straight to the throne and is received before the master and through that death the blood that comes from your death becomes your agreement the signature you sign with God for the next five years Lord I am still available Lord don't replace me with a stone Lord I am still there you have options but incorporate me in your program are you ready to pray? number one Lord make me blind to anything that can make me alive in myself whether it's pride whether it is money whether it is the flesh deaden my eyes deaden my ears deaden my senses to the impulses that can destroy my process of death lift your voice and pray Lift your voice and pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Not Nigeria. Not your family. Not ministry. Pray for yourself. Not your neighbor. Not your brother. Not your sister. Pray for yourself. Shalabarata kateleba, embrakete baruto soto baladabash, rakete baruto subariata. Lord, let me die the death that brings glory. Let me die the death that brings power. Deaden my eyes, deaden my ears to the impulses of distractions. Deaden my eyes, deaden my ears to the uploads of men. Deaden my eyes, deaden my ears flattery of men the deception of success bring me to a point where i am focused in death dying daily dying hourly I give you a key one more time for those who did not hold it this year you should hold it before you go home that everything only makes sense when death is in place that everything only makes sense when the flesh dies that everything only makes sense die 
daily die daily die on monday die on tuesday die on wednesday die on thursday die on friday die on saturday die on tuesday it is not physical death it is death to the flesh stay on the journey of pain grace and stamina the stamina to continue the stamina to press until you press to strange dimensions of anointings strange dimensions of graces die until god swears a vow upon your life die until the character of the spirit is continually formed in you die until you are dead that all of you is replaced by all of him Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray a very serious prayer. Oh God, purge my motives. Listen, purge my motivation. Why do I do the things that I do? Why do I preach? Why do I want money? Why do I want a wife? Why do I want a husband? Why do I want children? Why do I want influence? Why do I want my voice to be heard generationally? What is the intrinsic motivation? We are about to pray and let the light of God, the double-edged sword, penetrate dividing the soul and spirit and let it discern the thoughts and the intents of your heart. Don't be ashamed what you find there. Don't be embarrassed by it. That's what his presence is for. That's what the sword is for. But lift your voice. Purge my motif. Purge my motivation. The psalmist said, search my heart. Try my thoughts. And see if there's any evil way in me. Then he says, lead me to the way everlasting. Koinonia, pray in this final service. Shila baruto sodebash, eketa baruto soto pradish, randa baranta skabaru shaletos. Why do I want influence? Why do I want prosperity? Why do I want a voice? Why do I want the anointing? Why do I want the prophetic? Why do I want the healing grace? Why do I want access to the hearts of a generation? Pray and cry before God. Bring me to a point of nothingness where all that is in my heart is a desire to see you glorified, a desire to see your purposes established. Is someone praying? Few minutes and we are done, but pray. Shila Paruto Sodebash. The purity, the purity of my motivation, the purity of my motif, the purity of my desire. Lift your voice and pray. This is a process that makes you become a friend of God. This is a process that makes you become an icon for a generation. and die purify my motives purify my motivation if you find any motivation that is not the revelation of the Christ if you find any motivation that is not the enthroning of your purposes Lord I allow you to kill it pray that prayer let it die and die again and again
Listen. Hallelujah. We're rounding up, but listen, let me tell you this. Happy is a man. See, you see, Ba, outside of this journey, we are not worth much. We are very small. It is the excellency of this journey that makes you heavy. That's where the word glory comes from. Kabod, doxa, the weightiness of God upon a man. The mighty God upon a man doing wonders. The treasure that comes from heaven to turn a man around so that your life becomes an effulgence. Pages of wonders. Ever increasing wonders. We're going to pray the last point and we're done. Father, the next dimension of my life and my destiny, whatever price it would take to step into it, I obtain grace. The Bible says we should obtain grace. This grace is obtained. It is not assumed. It is obtained. Lift your voice and begin to pray. The next dimension. The next dimension of my prosperity. What is the price, so called? The next dimension of ministry. What is the price? The next dimension of influence. You are praying now, preparing for 2020. Is someone praying? Thank God for the 2019. Thank God for that which was done. But Lord, I set my face like a fling. Is someone praying tonight? What is the price for the anointing of 2020? What is the price for the influence of 2020? What is the price for the impact of 2020? What is the price for the speed of 2020? What is the price for the relevance of 2020? What will it take to be featured in your program no assumptions no assumptions i obtain grace i obtain grace i obtain grace to be featured in your program come 2020 i obtain grace to remain relevant in the scheme of things come 2020 i remain i obtain grace to remain your friend to remain a man after your heart grace to remain the voice please pray for yourself pray for your family pray for your church pray for your ministry pray for your business lord what will it take to remain what will it take to increase what will it take to advance what will it take Let me give us one more prayer point. The Lord is just ministering one more prayer point. We are going to pray. Holy Spirit. You see, the revelation of the Holy Spirit is a mighty secret. Many people know his power, but they do not know his presence. Many people know how to use the anointing that comes from the Holy Ghost to prophesy to pray for the sick but the intimacy paul said the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the koinonia the fellowship the participation the sharing together please you have to use this break to know the holy spirit thank god for ministers who continue to pray and based on the assignment he has given in life and in death will continue to be faithful to it but you must trust god for intimacy holy spirit who are you you are not just a wind benny Hinn said you are his friend Catherine kuman said you are her friend i can't lie that you are my friend reveal yourself to me not for the sake of ministry 
not for the sake of prophecy 99% of our pursuit for the Holy Spirit is to get the gifts that come from him so that we will increase our sphere and then use it to be relevant nonsense you must shelve those things and say Holy Spirit show me who you are that Shekinah that presence that intimacy Jesus walked with you you turned him into a sign and a wonder spirit of the living God and for some of us we have to pray and say Holy Spirit from where I left off let continue the journey because it was not like this from where I left off let's continue the journey pick my hands again turn me into a sign and a wonder but much more than that turn me into a friend we are going to pray Holy Spirit manifest yourself reveal yourself to me lift your voice and pray Reveal yourself in the quietness of the night. Haven't purged my motif. Haven't purged my motivation. Help me seek you for who you are. Help me know you for who you are. Not for what you can do to my life. Not what you can bring to my table. Let my life never remain the same. We're wrapping up. Aside from those who are under the anointing and those who are kneeling down, if you can hold someone's hand, if there's somebody near you to hold the hand, let's just hold hands as a family of faith, connecting with those all around the world. We will never be the same We've touched your grave Our lives will change We can never be the same Not with your grace Our lives must change Our lives will change Our lives will change Our hearts must change Father, I stand in the presence of your people And everyone who is connected to this grace And connected to this ministry all over this nation all over the continent of africa and all over the world we stand as a family in this last service and whilst thanking you for everything you have done in 2019 we decree and declare do not withhold administering the death that produces glory in us in the name of jesus Lord, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice and the millions connecting from different nations. Spirit of the living God, reveal yourself to us. Beyond religion, reveal yourself to us. In the name of Jesus. Father, I stand before your people. And as a family of faith, we cry. The price for the relevance of 2020, the price for the revelations of 2020, the price for the signs, the wonders, the influence, the price to end your trust for 2020 through the ministration of death. We pray in the name of Jesus, may that price be fully paid in our lives. I pray tonight and forever, search our hearts, O God, purify our motives, and continue to overturn and overturn until everything you find in our hearts is Christ. Christ enthroned, Christ glorified, Christ exalted, 
Christ revealed in the name of Jesus Christ father I decree and declare right now over everyone connected to this grace that in the name of Jesus let this break be a break that is worth the while let it be full of moments of encounter and intimacy let it be full of moments of plannings and revelations may this break be the bridge between our now and our tomorrow in the name of jesus for all of you who will be traveling in the name of jesus i decree and declare whether by road whether by sea whether by air i speak over you by the god of heaven may your journeys be blessed may your going out and your coming in remain blessed in the name of jesus i send you from this place tonight like the foxes of samson that you will go in the spirit and the power of elohim may you go and wreak havoc to the kingdom of darkness may you go and bring life be dispensers of life in your homes return back to your localities as signs and wonders and for as many of you who god will be giving instructions to do many things for the kingdom within the time of the break the grace to be effective let it be released everybody who will be on retreat everybody should be and everybody who will be on retreat i pray for you let there be an open heavens accurate delivery of the precepts for the next level of your life in the name of jesus i decree and declare every challenge in your life now and every challenge in your family and every challenge in your locality by the power that raised christ from the dead i declare that it leaves you now and forever anyone under the sound of my voice that the spirit of death is roaming around your life and around your family i stand by the god of heaven and i curse it now in jesus name i speak life to your destiny i speak life to your family i speak life to your body in the name of jesus christ Imarama Imarama you are seated on the throne Imarama Imarama yeah Away. He is my king. Hey. He is my king. He is seated on the throne. He is my king. You are seated on. You are Yahweh, Yahweh. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. You are seated on the throne. You are Yahweh. You're seated on the throne. Unto Him 
who sits upon the white horse. It's unto you who sits upon the white horse. You are Yahweh. Hey. You are week for those who are not around last week please please I want you to get the teaching I shared a very powerful mystery I'll recap on it very quickly and then we will pray hallelujah such an anointing in this place is seated on the throne he is Yahweh he is seated on Hallelujah. One of the greatest blessings personally upon my life aside from my love and the revelation of the Holy Spirit to me one of the greatest assets in my life is a comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. Please listen, pay attention. Please give me a moment. The mysteries of the kingdom. I told us last week that a mystery is a secret code of operation. Witchcraft works by mysteries. The kingdom works upon mysteries. Success is not a mistake. Deliverance is not a mistake. Healing is not a mistake. Favor is not a mistake. Breakthrough is not a mistake. All through from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible is full of men who dare to understand the principles of the kingdom. And on the strength of that understanding, they did exploits. And I just want to share one principle that the Lord has been putting upon my heart. Listen, God began with us last week. If you understand this singular principle that I'm teaching you, Many of you, that will be your gift for the miracle service. And you can literally walk out of here and guarantee that you will be a champion. Hallelujah. I began to share with us what I call the dominion mystery of tithing. The dominion mystery of tithing. Please pay attention. The dominion mystery of tithing. That there is a relationship between a tenth portion and a man's dominion upon the surface of the earth. Many preachers have taught the controversial subject of tithing and they have taught it only within the circumference of finances. And whilst that is true, there is more to it. There are so many of us here that are stealing from our future and authorizing the powers of darkness to make and keep us victims. But tonight I pray that the light will shine. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in the book of Genesis. How that when God made the garden of Eden. Watch this. The Bible says God put Adam there. And he gave him an instruction. He said. Of every tree in this garden you may freely eat. I give you access. Not ownership. 
I told you in the kingdom we don't own things. Those who own things are rebels in the kingdom. No man is an owner in the kingdom. Everyone only has access. We are stewards. High blood pressure is because we own things. Stroke and hypertension. When you own things, you worry about them. When you own things, you are concerned about keeping them. God never gives a man ownership. He gives every man access. The prodigal son had access, but he wanted ownership. From the day ownership started in his life, lack started. He became a victim of the very situations that he was head over until he returned back to access. And so the Bible tells us that Adam was given an instruction that in the very garden of Eden, there was a tree. Is that true? And he said of every tree you may eat, but this one is my portion. Leave it to me. The key to your dominion in this garden is not just prayer and fasting. There were no Bible studies in the garden of Eden. There were no apostles, no prophets, no miracle service. Only an instruction that obeying it will guarantee dominion. There were no churches in the garden of Eden. Only the presence of God and a heart willing to obey. And he says, this is the tight of the garden. Keep this tight. It is my designated portion. For as long as you honor my instruction and keep this portion, nothing will stop you from having access. Are you getting what I'm saying? Satan knew this. And so when he came and beguiled Eve, he made them to touch of the tight. The moment man touched of the tight, that very factor that made creation respond to him was lifted. And at once, everything began to fight him. The very leaves he was supposed to dominate now became his covering. He started running and we see fear. We see lies. We see intimidation because of one instruction. Violating the designated portion. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Then the Bible tells us, watch this. The Bible tells us how that he was sent out of a land of abundance and supply and peace and prosperity and goodness out of Eden to a land of struggle. The earth was caused for his sake. There was no longer dominion over the earth. God never caused man. God caused the earth. And by causing the earth, creation also responded to that. Watch this. I told us last week that there is an ability of God that comes upon a man that makes everything under the sun work in his favor. This is what the Bible calls the blessing. The blessing is a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit that makes everything, including problems, challenges, everything to work for you. When that ability of the Spirit is upon you, no matter what happens in your life, it must work for you. It's a law. Let me tell you what it means to be cursed. To be cursed does not mean that you are carrying just an evil pronouncement. No. A curse is an atmosphere. A curse is like an anointing in a negative sense upon your life that makes creation fight you. Everything fights you. Opportunities fight you. Friends fight you. A blessing fights you. When a man who is cursed stands, his atmosphere not only fights him, but it fights anybody who wants to help him. Are you getting the point now? So the idea of cause is not just about what happens in covenants. The earth has been authorized by a divine pronouncement to fight anyone who dishonors the designated portion. Listen, let me tell you something. This system we are working in is already cursed. It's a cursed system. There is nothing you can do about it. Your only key is to exempt yourself. And there is a law. It's an ancient mystery of exemption that exempts you from the inevitable vicissitudes of life. A job cannot exempt you. An educational qualification cannot exempt you. Nothing 
aside from the operation of the laws of the spirit can exempt you now the bible tells us about abraham who was an idol worshiper that came from a land called or of the chaldeans in genesis chapter 12 the bible tells us how that god told abraham come out of your kindred and your father's house to a land that i will show you he began to propose to abraham how that you would bless him and told abraham i will make you the landlord of the earth something will happen upon your life that will make the earth to become your possession and then in chapter 14 when he went to capture lot and bring him back the bible says he met a strange man called melchizedek who was a king of an ancient city of peace called salem the ancient name for jerusalem the hebrew is jerusalem an ancient city of peace a man according to hebrews with no origin no beginning no end no father no mother a man who was operating in the office of the priesthood and the bible says when abraham encountered this priest a transaction happened between two of them please follow me the bible says abraham took the tenth of all and gave unto melchizedek do you believe that he took a tenth of all gave unto melchizedek when he gave a tenth of all to melchizedek melchizedek received it and did what he activated the blessing he said blessed be abraham son of the most high possessor of the heavens and the earth and at once the earth started walking abimelech wanted to take his wife that is a bad situation is that not true but because of the blessing abimelech released the wife and gave him gifts gave him gifts a man one moment you want to take away his wife another moment you not only become his friend you honor him with gifts there is a mystery that governs this creation do you know what we call bad luck you know what we call misfortune misfortune is not just an issue of witchcraft like ancestry misfortune is the resultant effect of taking from the designated portion there is already an authorization whether there are witches in your family or not that every time you touch god's portion you violate a law the earth starts reacting to it at once are you getting blessed now the destiny of abraham was opened up on account of this portion jacob who was the um son from the lineage of abraham watch this jacob worked for laban is that not true laban cheated jacob right he was about to give him a daughter and he said i will work seven years and then he exchanged Rachel with Leah and he worked for another seven years then he had been with him six years 20 years of oppression from a man but it still didn't matter because something was upon him and he said all right this is what will happen take your spotted calf I will take calves that are not spotted the Bible tells us like begets like and Jacob said from the calves that are not spotted if they give birth, we will watch. If the unspotted calf give birth to spotted children, they are my own. And the Bible says he took ordinary stick. It was not an ordinary stick, brothers and sisters. And the calves who come to mate, just looking at a stick, a white cow or a, 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 a spotless um, animal will now give birth to another animal that is spotted. It is not just creation was working for him when so even if you cheated him something happened and the cows out the animal started giving birth and laban said my goodness what is happening leave my presence that is a man who has honored god with his portion today i want to show you a dimension of the dominion mystery of titan watch this do you know why many people never walk in kingdom authority many churches are barren producing posters now i'm not against that but i'm saying every week hand bills every week running around scrounging for members threatening people with causes let me tell you why because there is a law that they are violating consistently and god is no respecter of person 
the laws of the spirit has equal value in any territory equal value is God speaking to us tonight when Moses died please look up everyone when Moses died the Bible tells us how that he told Joshua he said Moses my servant is dead and now Joshua had a responsibility to throw down Jericho and he was afraid because the Bible tells us that Jericho was a mighty city do you know the fence of Jericho according to scripture five chariots could stand on the fence how will you break through that fence that is a challenge but he said I will show you something watch this 5 verse 1 of Joshua open our eyes oh God and let men and women walk away from their chains forever in the name of Jesus Christ let them walk away from their chains forever in the name of Jesus Christ and it came to pass it will be a fast reading when all the kings of the Amorites who were on the side of Jordan westward and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over that their hearts melted neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel now watch this they were about to challenge Jericho and when the other kings heard of the mighty things that God did, the kings tried to decipher what is it about Israel that makes them always win battles? What is it that makes them, whether you have a greater armory than them, is insignificant. They will throw you down. There was a mystery of dominion they were working with. And God was about to introduce Joshua. Joshua was just a young ruler taking over from Moses. And this is what he told him let's see the mystery let's take chapter 5 verse 2 5 verse 2 are you there now let's look at it it says at that time the lord said unto joshua do what he said make sharp knives he's about to teach him how to continue in the steps of moses make sharp knives and circumcise again the children of israel the second time let's continue three and joshua made sharp knives and circumcised all the children at the heel of the four skins and then and this is the reason why he circumcised them all the people that came out of egypt were males even all the men of war they died in the wilderness after they came out of egypt five now all the people that came out were circumcised but all the people that were born in the wilderness by the way when they came forth out of egypt were not circumcised are you seeing that now all those who had been winning and making israel make progress it was because they were circumcised but he said these guys are not circumcised and if you don't circumcise them something dangerous is about to happen to you verse 6 it says for the children of israel walked 40 years in the wilderness and all of that and all of that let's go to verse 7 and their children whom he raised up in their stead them joshua circumcised for they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way verse 8 watch this and it came to pass when they were done circumcising all the people they abode in their places watch this joshua is afraid of conquering jericho and the walls that are before him and god said no problem heaven wants to come into your affairs but you need to authorize them it says circumcise the people the moment the circumcision finished verse 9 let's see what happened and the lord said to joshua this day i have what rolled away the reproach of egypt my goodness so all the while they were carrying the reproach because they were not circumcised he said the moment a circumcision a separation a cutting away happened he said this day i have rolled away the reproach of egypt from you wherefore the name of the place to this day is called gilgal go to verse 13 
Let's see something mysterious that happened. Verse 13. Everyone look up. And it came to pass. Listen. Joshua was by Jericho. That he lifted up his eyes. Immediately after circumcision. He saw a strange man who came. And said I'm ready to partner with you. You have invited the realm of the spirit. Into your affair. That man had been there all the while. But there was no access. He said you need help. You can't conquer Jericho by your strength. The realm of the spirit wants to partner with you. But the secret is the circumcision. The moment it happened. The Bible says he lifted up his eyes. And he saw a man with a sword. And he went to him and said. Are you for us or against us? Next verse. And he said nay. But I come. I'm also a warrior. But I fight in the spirit. The same way you guys are warriors. I am also a captain. I lead a battalion. I help men on earth who invite us to come. You are seated on the throne. And he said, And Joshua fell on his face and did worship. And he said unto him, What saith my Lord to his servant? Next verse. Watch this. And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off your foot. From the place you stand this holy ground. And Joshua did so. Next verse. Now Jericho was straightly shot. Watch this. Let me just save our time. Are you noticing what is happening here? Immediately after the circumcision, he saw the captain. Then the captain started revealing to him the strategy. This is how you will take Jericho. Otherwise they would have died there. Because physically speaking, Jericho was insurmountable. Now watch this. Your tithe in the spirit is similar to this spiritual circumcision. Your tithe is an authorization for the realm of the spirit to come into your affairs and partner with you. This is the reason why even human beings for men, men because men are the carriers of the seed, men are instructed to be circumcised. Why not? Sir? How can a man come from heaven? We believe children are the heritage of the Lord. But you will give birth to a man and he will still go to circumcision. Are you getting the point now? Because the moment circumcision happens, the realm of the spirit comes. Come, come. Watch this. You are on your own. Minding your business. Trying to win the war of life by yourself. And God is saying, you are doing this thing sensually. You are doing this thing carnally. You never will be able to do it. He says, honor me with your tithe. And the moment that happens, there is already a spiritual arsenal that comes to work with you. And that which you have becomes supernatural. Not just natural. Not just natural. It becomes supernatural. The reason why there is a crowd of people inside and outside. Look at this. Right to the road. Right everywhere. Let me tell you the reason why. It is not just because this is a great ministry. It is because we have beckoned on the assistance of the supernatural. There are some people standing outside who are even shocked that they are here. When you see them, you imagine there is no amount of invitation you would have given them to come but for the realm of the spirit. He said, I am come as a captain. In other words, the same way you fight, there are spiritual arsenals to wait in. You have been trying to fight every battle in your life just by using physical arsenals. And the Lord is saying, the earth is fighting you. When you return my designated portion, you authorize the realm of the spirit to begin to help you. This ministry by the grace of God. We are faithful. Never for any reason. And by any means under the sun. Will we touch God's portion. Not out of fear. But out of revelation. My life as a person. God is my witness. That I honor him. And that portion that belongs to him this is why i'm dangerously protected it's not about a man no 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 dangerously protected 
I share with you a simple but powerful mystery. When Pastor Jax was sharing and he said, they picked somebody from his position and makes him a deputy manager. Deputy manager with interviews on phone. You went to school and you are intelligent. Is that how it is done? Let me tell you, the blessing breaks the rules for you. It breaks the rules for you. Yes, when men say it cannot be done, it breaks the rules. The problem is that we are too carnal. We have intellectualized life. Life is spiritual. Say it after me. One more time. Shout it like you believe it. Life is spiritual. All that you see is not all that there is. Those who are controlling this world are those who have an advantage of the spirit. You are Yahweh, you are seated on the throne. You are Yahweh, you are seated on the throne. Tonight God is asking you, are you ready to stop struggling in life? Let me tell you, struggling is a cause. If you ever convince yourself that God is the author of your struggle, I am telling you now, struggling is a cause it's a cause from the pit of hell you will never be able to serve God if all you are doing in your life is looking for money because money is not missing you were never supposed to look for it hallelujah you will never be able to serve God if you allow this mammon the spirit that takes the heart of men away from God to begin to pursue other things trying to look for earthly relevance there are people who want to build a house but they want to build it physically by putting blocks you will die trying to build that house because there is a spiritual dimension to everything give us James chapter 2 verse 26 I hope we'll be able to find it I'm reserving it for next week by the way next week Friday here is going to be a powerful vigil hallelujah yes next week is going to be a vigil it's going to be a time of prayer and worship we're inviting guests from all over now watch this the Lord showed me this mystery and it changed my life I shared it in Abuja I was reserving it to start the teaching next week but your hunger has tempted me to go to that scripture and let's let's touch it a bit Paul watch this oh, sorry James the apostle James was teaching on faith and works corresponding action is that true and while he was teaching on faith and works he just veered off and brought a powerful principle in an attempt to explain faith and work he he, he compares it with something he says for as the body without what a spirit now all of you watch this guy the only reason that I can interact with him is because there is a spirit is that true if the spirit leaves this body what happens I will reject the body all of you will reject the body are you getting me and we will have to bury him because it is a body though complete it has no spirit are you getting me now I want you media please keep it there keep it there so that we'll... I want you to remove the word as and just read just the first line to the comma are you ready want to read one more time one more time for the body without the spirit is dead it is didn't say for the body of man for any material thing that does not have a spiritual force backing it it is dead for any material business without a spirit equivalent is dead for any church without a spirit agency backing it is like a dead body it says for a body without a spirit so the nation of israel was like a body without a spirit and he said joshua you will lose you need the spirit component and circumcision authorized the spirit when the realm of the spirit came they said let's go we can take jericho and with one shout this was what david knew 
that as big as Goliath was, he was a body without a spirit. The other people were looking from the three-dimensional realm. Ah, Goliath was shouting and David looked at him. He said, I see a body, but there is no covenant, no spirit. What is the force in the spirit backing you? And Goliath said, am I a dog? Even if you fight me, honor me. And David said, you are joking. You don't know who is talking. I'm not alone. I, I, you are an uncircumcised. See the word again. See the word again. You are an uncircumcised. I would have been afraid of you. I would have considered your threat if you were circumcised. Where is the ties that connects you to the realm of the spirit? And he said, I'm circumcised. I may be weak, but there is a government that backs me. When you get this key, my brother, you will run as if Satan does not exist. I promise you. I promise you. This, you can jump around for deliverance. You can hop from everywhere. But the body without a spirit is dead. So your boss in the office knows this. And there is a spirit that backs his chair. You just get up with your, your certificate and sit on that chair and it becomes too hot. Because all in that office is not just a chair. It's a throne. There are spirits back in it. That's why the Bible says they that knew their God. They that have connected with a spiritual advantage. They shall be strong. Shall do exploits. Rise from the realm of being natural. And tap into the supernatural realm. Where the realm of the spirit assists you. And your life will be nothing short of a wonder. How many people, listen, I have given up on trying to do things by my strength. Because I know I'm wasting my time. The body. In the same way, the next time somebody stands and threatens you, that is a body without a spirit. See, no matter what talk people talk, I only consider you if you are connected spiritually. Are you getting what I'm saying? I will deal with you. The body without the spirit is dead. I will make sure you leave this job. The body without the spirit is dead. You only pay attention to a man who has risen beyond the three-dimensional realm because there is an assistance, whether demonic or whatever. Are you getting me? circumcision is that key there are many who continue ah we have a an extent we're going to be touching on the matters of the kingdom next week friday i'll be showing you certain secrets of the kingdom that it will make you almost like a drunk man you will get up and jump and shout tonight all we are doing in this miracle service is by an ancient mystery crying and asking heaven and say lord behold the sick people and already in this place there are more angels the arsenals in the realm of the spirit are more than what you know that's always what happens whenever you see me come to sit down i smile around the stage i would have died of hypertension if i'm responsible for your healing but we have made arrangement already we are covered oh yes absolutely we are covered Heaven is jealous, jealous to protect his own because God's designated portion. Listen, when you steal your tithe, you have not only destroyed your destiny, you have stolen from your children. Every time you don't tithe, just know that your firstborn is in trouble. If you don't do it again, you are affecting your children. Because he said, I will pour you a blessing you will not have room. In other words, no matter how greedy you are, your lifetime cannot exhaust it. So when you steal, you have endangered the destiny of your children. God's portion. If anyone ever told you tithing is all about money, that person lied to you or was sincerely wrong. Tithing has nothing to do with money. 
is the law of open heavens. Let me surprise you. If your tithe is 10,000 and you carry 1 million and give charity foundation and you don't tithe that 10,000, you are operating under a closed heaven. Don't convince yourself that because you gave 1 million, the heavens is open. It is called due process. I will teach you next week. There is a protocol to spiritual things. Are you getting my point? Tithing is what opens your heavens. And then anything you do under that open heavens will prosper. If you like, carry one billion. Give charity organization. Give for the building of church. If you are not a tither, I guarantee you. The Bible says your heaven shall be brass and your earth iron. All of them are conductors of heat. Get set for heat in your life. When the heaven is open, if, not, if for nothing we know there is ventilation, fresh air, the wind comes. But when your heaven is brass and your earth is iron, many of us here, no matter what prayer happens in this, that's why we took the communion. The devourer is authorized to destroy anyone who is not spiritually circumcised. The devourer is not a demon the devourer is a principality even jesus christ acknowledged them that's why he said he is the head of principalities it destroys men's lives on legal basis this earth is too wicked for you to allow chance no i pray for people all the time people with cancers hiv tuberculosis communicable diseases imagine if i refuse to be faithful i would die like a chicken because most times i lay hands on people and there are medical doctors here they know that some of these things are physically not healthy but i'm circumcised my goodness you invoke my name in a shrine both the invoker the invokee and the ordinance it they will burn to ashes ashes no matter how mad a man is, he doesn't enter fire by mistake. He can cross the road and you say he's a madman. But when he sees fire, he fears off. When heaven backs you, let me tell you, your life becomes a wonder even to you. This ministry is a wonder to everyone. Not just because we are so smart. We are just stupid enough to involve the realm of the spirit. Because by the arm of flesh, shall no man prevail you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne oh sing oh fountains of the deep cry out kadosh you are mighty on your throne Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. Break forth, O oh Spirit of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. Mighty on your own. You are mighty on your own. You are mighty on your own. You are mighty on your throne. 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 You are mighty in this place. 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 You are mighty in my life. 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 Hallelujah.
We are going to pray just two prayer points and then I'll begin to minister. You are mighty in this place. They that are with us are greater, greater, greater. Mantos Kalabandigalia. There shall no man be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Rababa Prayer point number one. Oh God, by the blood I cry for mercy. Where I've allowed the devourer, I have stolen from my tithe your designated portion. I've allowed the devil deceive me that the tithe is a gimmick by preachers. Now I realize and I ask for your mercy. Lift your voice and pray. Inside and outside, lift your voice. Your tithe is your spiritual circumcision Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Ask for fresh grace. Oh. And make a vow that you will never miss out on your tithe again. Make, make a vow. Not by fear. assurance and I pledge the name of the Lord upon this if you take what I've shared tonight for many of you this is your secret is your password to a mysterious level of lifting a level of lifting that will surprise you as much as surprise those who are your spectators God's portion the time his designated portion that makes creation to walk in your favor makes your enemies to walk in your favor mysterious but powerful consistent hallelujah just one more prayer and then we'll trust to see the mighty things that the Lord is going to do I want you to lift your voice in one minute we are going to pray in the next five minutes listen I want you to confront the gates of your destiny and I want you to pray and say you must open up this night. Lift your voice. It's the seventh month. 
one more prayer because I see the angels of the Lord already moving let me just add one more prayer listen I want you to pray listen there are giants on every mountain every one of us is holding a prayer request because there is an aspect of your life the devil has refused to let you go but tonight i want you to lift up your voice and prophesy to the heavens and challenge those powers and say i must go tonight lift your voice inside and outside cry I must walk away. That carrying out disease must die today. That cancer must live today. That HIV must go today. That barrenness must go today. That stagnation must go today. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Oh, 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 Hallelujah. Now, before I begin ministering, please, can I have that family if they are here? The family that came with the poison person. Are they here? Please, let's save time. If they are here, just signify by wave of hand and then run out here quickly. There's a lot to do tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. While that is happening, I want everybody to follow up on your prayer request. If you are here to write, please one minute so that when we begin to flow we just move and we don't stop so you have one minute while you are praying in tongues just write your prayer requests very quickly so that when it's time to pass it you just pass it very fast Mr. 
make sure you don't keep silent write the issues that have threatened you and watch the god of heaven turn them into testimonies What can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave without you. So tell me what can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave without you. tonight and we declare that this atmosphere is completely under the influence of the Holy Spirit and that everybody here within this vicinity comes under the influence of the Spirit Lord that no one will walk out of this place without a touch of God hallelujah hallelujah now I'm going to begin to minister to us and while I prayed for this in the course of the week, again and again, I kept seeing, please pay attention. Can I have strings, 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 strings? Hallelujah. I kept seeing again and again, spirits, watch this, spirits leeching onto people. This is what I kept seeing. Like a man sitting on a man's shoulder. I saw this over many people. And I said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? And the Lord began to, re to reveal to me that these are the spirits that cause setbacks upon the lives of men and upon the lives of families. And the Lord said, when I come up, he said, the first thing I should do is dislodge those powers. Dislodge those powers. I saw them like a man, like a child who sit down on the shoulder of another, bringing a resistance to your destiny. And I'm about to pray for you right now. There are so many people under the sound of my voice. So many people under the sound of my voice. They must go. Heaven is here to assist us. Lift your hands everyone. Inside and outside. There will be such mighty deliverances outside. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I even see someone um, uh, suffering from severe migraine. But then that migraine you think is just sickness. We are about to make a shout, brothers and sisters. This shout is like the sling of David. It looks ordinary, but there is a circumcision upon it. It's a shout that rises beyond the earth realm. It's a shout that rises beyond the intelligence of men. It's a shout that is like a battle sound to the angelic. It's like a battle sound because your destiny must open up right now. There will be mighty deliverances. Mighty deliverances. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for us and then at the count of three we're going to shout that name Jesus my goodness 
I sense the anointing of the spirit heavy. The power of God will fall upon many of you in a mighty way and you will see this spirit. Some of you are already feeling uncomfortable. It's the power of God, especially many outside. There will be mighty deliverances. Lift your hands now. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of your son, I pray right now and I sound an alarm in the realm of the spirit. I decree and I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost that the fire of the Spirit oh restrain not your hand oh mighty one we pray that you arise as a man of war there are destinies at the mercy of your touch I pray that by this shout oh God there be a visitation that by this shout oh God everyone here under any spirit help them please help them bring them out everyone here under any influence as we shout let fire catch them and visit their foundations and i command every power that at this shout you will let god's people go inside and outside one two three shout that name i command witchcraft powers of darkness right now right now in the name of jesus inside and outside inside and outside inside and outside the fire of god is falling on people falling on people i cause witchcraft i cause witchcraft i cause witchcraft I cause this crap in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. Malatata. I'm seeing altars on fire. That's what I see in the spirit. Please bring them out. Altars on fire. One more time, we're going to shout. Physically, many of you will feel the fire. Physically, physically. Right now, in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus! Oh yes! That fire! That fire! Of the Holy Ghost! Outside! 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 You must let them go. You must let them go. Right now. By fire. The 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 fire. Lift your hands. There are people here. As I begin to speak, the Holy Ghost will locate them. I'm seeing ladies. Ladies, a man comes to you in the night and sleeps with you right now by fire. Oh God, locate them right now. Right now, right now. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. Ladies, ladies, a miracle is happening to sister. I cost us I'm seeing a family in the vision of the Lord. Everyone in that family has been tied down by witchcraft. Lord, where is that person in this place? Inside and outside. Right now as I speak, oh. the power of God comes upon that person. Oh. Right now, wherever that person is, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, 
inside and outside the power of God comes upon that person hallelujah hallelujah lift your voice in one minute this is what the lord is telling me as we begin to pray miracles will start happening lift your voice and break every chain holding you down go ahead this is what god is telling me please lift your hands lift your hands i hear my spirit families families god is stepping into families there are altars there are altars over families that are about to be broken as you are standing right now god is going to be visiting your family at that shout again inside and outside make sure you're participating inside and outside we are going to shout that name as you shout the name of jesus families i see altars on fire are you ready now father any family under the yoke of bondage as they shout this name let there be a visitation one two three Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice. And ask him for a visitation again. Something serious is happening in this place. <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah lift your hands i'm hearing marital spells marital spells please lift your hands listen hear me something mighty is about to happen here the lord is ministering to me that there are people who there are spells tying down their marriages whether single or married right now lift your hands as i begin to speak the wind i see like a wind a whirlwind moving across this auditorium oh. it will catch up with some people right now where are they oh god visit them right now in the name of jesus one more time we will shout that name wherever they are one, two three jesus Yeah! Sir, 
Dorcas, Dorcas, a miracle is coming. Dorcas, an altar is on fire. And I'm hearing the Lord telling me a miracle. Dorcas, Dorcas, come and stand here. Hallelujah. Who is Israel? I'm hearing a name Israel. Israel, the Lord is ministering to me. Tonight, He must let you go. Let you go. Hallelujah. Now, the Lord is showing me a woman. You are here. You had a miscarriage. There is a woman here who had a miscarriage. It's like you had a child and you lost the baby. And the Lord is telling me, please help them, those under the anointing, so that we don't, this place is not rowdy. Listen, let me tell you something. The anointing of the Spirit does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. The anointing does not make the difference. Without the anointing, we are just making noise here. But by the anointing, and I'm telling you this, no matter where you are, whether you are inside here or outside or right at the back, I want you to connect because God is visiting you. And every one of you must have a touch. Dorcas, where is your mother, my dear? Huh? I'm not busy, Zaria, sir. No, I'm not saying. She's Where is she? Mina, Nigeria. She's in Mina. Yes, we have to pray because the Lord is bringing a mighty breakthrough for your family. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Hold my hands, Father. Change the story of this lady by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, as I hold your hands, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the Lord set you free, Madam. Look at me. Where is your husband? At home. Huh? He's at home. Why didn't he come with you? Because there is a breakthrough that is a portion for him in this meeting. Amen. But I'm going to pray for you. Yes, you believe that? Yes, sir. You believe that? Yes, sir. Because this is delay. Yes. I'm seeing delay in your yes, family. Sir. Serious yes, delay. Yes, sir. It's even becoming an issue of argument between you and your husband. Yes, sir. I'm seeing two of you arguing. Yes, sir. But the Lord is saying he is bringing rest to your yes, family. Sir. This Amen, night. Sir. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Father, let there be rest. Rest for her. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are doctors. Where is your mother, my dear? You. She stays in Kaduna. Why? The same way you are crying is how I'm seeing your mother crying in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is ministering to me. The Lord is saying, Why wouldn't she cry when the load is too much on her? Look at me. Like we shared, tell your mother to get back into faithfulness in tithing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And even you yourself otherwise you will keep seeing repeated hardship but hold my hands in the name of jesus lord bring rest to this lady bring rest to her in the name of jesus christ Can, where is the woman that had a miscarriage there is a woman that had a miscarriage and the lord is asking me to minister to her we may not be able to minister to everybody but there is there is someone please make sure you don't sit back the lord is ministering to me about that person so that we'll just we'll just pray for her. Dogara, Dogara. I'm hearing a name Dogara. Dogara. Who is Dogara? You. Your name is Dogara. Yes, sir. Where's your dad? He's at home. In Kaduna. He's, he's at home. In Kaduna. We have to pray for him. What I'm seeing will never, if they are permitting anything, please and please, maybe carry them out. Of We're about to pray, please. Don't worry. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands right now. Oh, 
over and I cause that spirit that wants to bring accident in the name of Jesus it will not come to pass we cancel it right now by the blood of Jesus Christ amen madam I want to pray for you the way I'm holding your hands that's the way the Lord is saying I should tell you he's going to begin to hold your hands and that he will cause you to move forward in your life the Lord is saying I should tell you he's bringing restoration to your life and he's bringing joy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ let it be you are the one with miscarriage why did you sit back now come there's nothing embarrassing about it madam this is a family because I'm seeing another one happening and we must pray for you yes sir it's happening again yes. we have to cancel it okay, eh? yes, it's not a normal thing that you are having miscarriage yes, because there is a spirit that oppresses you yes, eh? yes, and that's what is responsible for that miscarriage it's not just about praying praying and saying pray for me okay, you understand yes, it takes the anointing of the holy spirit you will give birth to a baby boy oh. hallelujah father in the name of jesus christ i pray that this family will experience your touch madam lay, lay your hands on your stomach Father, there will not be miscarriage again in the name of Jesus. That's right. I see the spirit. Let her go right now. Right now, release her completely. I set her free. Lord, you showed me a baby boy. Confirm your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here? Dorcas, your name is Dorcas too. Your name is Dorcas too. Your daughter's name. Just stand and pray for all of you. You are Israel. I'm going to pray for you. Are you a student? Yes, we have to pray because I'm, I'm seeing the devil attacking your academics. Attacking your academics very seriously. So that they will not begin to tell you your scripts are missing. Huh? And then they will implicate you in the malpractice. The Lord is asking me to minister to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that this is broken. You are all Israel's. And I'll pray with you. Let her go right now. I curse you by the God of heaven. Release her right now and let her go. Right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm looking at this woman but in the realm of the spirit all I'm seeing is a large snake. That's all I'm seeing moving around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where's the usher? Ushers. Lay your hands on this lady. Just what I mean. I curse that spirit. You must release her right now in the name that is above all names there is no hiding place the light of God is against you in the name of Jesus Christ there is no hiding place for you by the blood of Jesus Christ you must release this woman is a spirit of death let her go right now in the name of Jesus Christ father may they experience your touch in the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience your touch. In the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience, I curse that spirit. Let her go. Let her go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your baby snake. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is liberty for this boy. There's liberty in the name of Jesus Christ. There's liberty. Hallelujah. Now, all those who were brought out here under the anointing, I want to I want to speak to them now. Don't worry. Everyone out here, I speak to the spirits that are tormenting you. You know my voice, I represent the most high. At the count of three, leave them and go. Right now, one, two, go, go, go. Out of the red out. Out of the house, out now, never to return. At your Lord, live your life, live your destiny. Restoration of virtue, of grace. I cost that spirit from its foundation. I cost it from the blood of Jesus. All those who are trusting God for jobs, lift your hands. I see a strange anointing in this place. Please, don't withhold your hand. Don't withhold your hand. There is an anointing. There is an anointing.
Sister, you looking at me, rejoice. I see an appointment letter given to you. You, this lady looking at me, you come. I'm talking to her. You are turning back. You come, 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 come. I see an appointment letter given to you. There will be mighty miracles of jobs. Hallelujah, come. This is the person I'm talking about. Because I was praying and before I would even start, I saw them handing over to you something that looks like an appointment letter. Right? You believe me? You believe me? You will see it and you will stand before God's people to testify. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. The Lord says, I should tell you, he's rolling away your reproach, madam. The reproach of many years is being rolled away in this season. That's what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. The reproach of many years is being rolled away. I'm seeing like a baller. That's what I'm seeing. A trash place where they pour dirt. And I'm seeing a new seed shooting out. And that's what is, that's, that's like a type of your destiny. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's rolling away the reproach from your life. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands and let's release miracle job. If you don't believe in it, put down your hand. I command you by the blood of Jesus, you foul spirit, you have oppressed this body. In the name of Jesus, I break your covenant, I break your ordinance. There is a strong spirit that has been oppressing this lady. It's not just her. Can you look at how many people holding one tiny lady? I curse you. Now, I curse you. I curse you by the God of heaven. And I curse you by my office. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I curse that power. Let her go now. Right now. Release her destiny. Release her family now. By the blood of the eternal covenant. She's free. Go. Release her now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Listen, listen. People of God, don't think we are playing games here. I know you may see some of the things happening. These are the powers that have tied down men's life. It's not solved by counseling. You are just moving in the physical Yet in the realm of the spirit you are bound. We are not embarrassed. We are never embarrassed to set people free. Because that's what Jesus said. There's got to be a way of setting people free. Hallelujah. Father, jobs now. In the name that is above all names. I want you to receive it as a prophecy over your life. Lord, I declare everyone called jobless here by the favor of God I terminate joblessness right now. By the favor of God I terminate joblessness right now. Anyone who has applied for any job I compel them to call you. Amen. I compel them to call your loved ones. Amen. I compel them to favor you. Amen. Hallelujah. Do we have anyone here called Agnes? Agnes. I'm hearing a name, Agnes. The Lord is ministering to me about one Agnes. We'll begin to pray for the sick shortly. Agnes. I'm hearing the name Agnes. God is ministering to me. He wants to bring deliverance to the family of Agnes. Do we have anyone there? Agnes. Your name is Agnes. Your name too. 
a family member. Okay, I'm going to pray for you. We'll begin to pray for the sick after this. Father, in the name of Jesus, bring breakthrough for this family. You showed me that you're visiting this family. Go ahead and confirm your word with signs following. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Whoever is Agnes in your family, let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus. I want to begin to pray for the sick, but I'm seeing a very serious situation here. There's someone here with a swollen leg. I don't know who that person is. Your leg mysteriously paining you and it looks it's, it's like swollen this is what i see in the vision that the lord is showing me who is that person your leg is swollen where is it which of the legs Look what, look, if, if the devil, you remember I told you this, a body without the spirit, look what is happening to this girl. And then you just come and marry her because you think you want a wife. Are you seeing that? Is, is, if it can, look at one, two, three, four, five people holding one person. Imagine what it would do to someone's destiny. I say this without a sense of cynicism. Many of the people that God is setting free attend churches every week. Look, we need to restore the power of God in our churches and stop playing games with God. Because God's idea is not just for one platform. Hallelujah. Swollen legs. No, 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 don't, you, don't, you don't have to. Madam, I see you too. Your legs. For how long? What's the situation with her? Is her leg swollen? Okay, hold on. She can't walk. Baby, how are you? Hallelujah. Please help us with the mic. Who brought her? Okay, no, it's okay, it's okay. What's your name? Annie. Annie? Your name is Anne. Agnes. Alice. Your name is Alice. You can't walk. You can walk, but your leg is bent. Oh my goodness, look at such an innocent lady. Lord, have mercy on this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the Lord will visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go back when I begin to pray for the sick and we let them come out. I'm just ministering to special cases. Leg. Your leg. All of you who had a dream, in a dream is like something was shot. It's like, I don't know if it was an arrow. I'm seeing something that looks like a dream. And something was shot on your legs. If the person is not here, I'm seeing someone who had that dream. It's like, I don't know if it was like a gun or something. Or, an, uh, or a, 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 a sharp object. I know that it was, it's like it was shot to your leg. Something beats me when I was sleeping. I just broke up and screamed. So blood was coming out of my legs. I, I'll pray for you, but this one I'm seeing, I just want to flow as the Holy Spirit is directing me. It's like, it, it looks like a gun or something sharp. Huh? I was shot in the realm of the Spirit. In my dream. You were shot. Fired at you. Yes. And what happened to you? I only I prayed when I woke up. You prayed dream. when you woke up. The Lord is going to set you free. I know that I've talked to you once, but truly, truly, there is a spirit of delay and stagnation in your life. Because you love God, and God is going to use you in many ways. Not just in the area of the anointing, but even in the area of finances. But as it is, there are many things that are not moving in your life. Lift your hands, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, the reason why you redeem is so that we will be free. I pray that you set this gentleman free by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Everything that was fired on your leg in Jesus' name, I curse it. Jesus' name. What's happening to you, madam? My leg is swollen. Your leg? Yes. What happened? It's just paining you or it's swollen? It's paining in me. For me to stand or to walk, almost two years, it's broken for 
Almost two years. Which of the legs? This one. What can't you do? Like, I can't stand straight. Some like people are standing now. For me to stand still, you can't stand straight. It's a problem for me. Yes. Is it that it's shorter than another? Or what was the issue? It's not shorter than another. Okay. It's the same. It's you believe? Huh? Why is she here? She's your daughter. My father was shot in a dream by an arrow. It, according to my dad, it entered his thigh and came and out. Came out. The other this thigh. is the person I'm talking about. And it, huh? it caused a physical wound on his thigh up to present. This guy Where is, is he? Here. Is he here? He's in Lagos, sir. He's in Lagos. Yes, sir. You believe God will touch him? Yes, sir. When I pray for you, call him and tell him yes, that he's been prayed for. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, because sir. this is witchcraft. Where are you from? I'm from Benway State. What's your name? My name is Kate. Kate. Yes, sir. From Benway State. Hold yes, my hand. Father, visit this family. You have revealed this in the name of Jesus. I cost this witchcraft. Let it leave your father never to return. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it leave your father never to return. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Madam, you believe Jesus will heal you? Yes, I believe. You believe with all your heart? Yes. Madam, what's your situation? I have nail pains. Since I, yes, since I feel sick, they used to swell up. Since, you, I, since I was sick for six months, they used to swell up. But now, I can't walk, I can walk and feel. Hearing sharp pain. Where? Where is the sharp pain? Okay, how about you? My leg is swollen for about five years. Five years? Where is, which one is swollen? Oh, I see. You can't stand? I can't stand for long. For a long time. Mama, how about you? I'm not two months now. I started in this leg. Two, two months? Yes. What's happening? I have arthritis. You have arthritis? Yes. Who else? Who again? I have leg broken. Leg broken. All of you, I'm going to pray for you too. Your legs are swollen. Oh, you are the one who said something beat you. Ah, you are a worker in this place. Let's challenge that devil. She's a worker in this house. There is an immunity. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that this will never return to her again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Never return to her by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray for you. And I want you to check yourselves after I pray for you. Jesus. Sister, five years your leg has been swollen permanently like that. Have you gone to the hospital? What did they tell you? Nothing was found. Eh? Nothing was found. Nothing is wrong. Because when a thing is spiritual, no matter what happens in the physical, you may not be able to get an equivalent, um, a, a something to be able to treat. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we cause witchcraft. This is like, right? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command freedom, freedom for your legs. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of witchcraft. Mama, I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray for you right now. Every wicked spirit leaves you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lay your hands on your chest. The Lord is bringing you deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus. This is witchcraft. For five years, I'm seeing a spirit. Go! Go! In the name of Jesus, you can't remain in her. The swollen legs, I command the swelling to go down. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, Mama, I pray for your leg. In Jesus' name. I pray for your leg. That's where the pain is. Just lay your hands there. In the name of Jesus Christ. I cause the pain by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please check yourselves. Check yourselves. Check yourselves. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. Tell me if there's any improvement. How many of us came here either for ourselves or for our loved ones to be healed? Specifically in the area of healing. Let me just see your hands. Inside and outside, can you just wave it to the Lord? How many of you came here to be healed? Okay, very quickly, while the worship team leads us in a powerful worship session, want all the sick people to make their way right now. Just, just guide all the people that are under the anointing. Just shift them. Don't drag them around. Please, let's do that very quickly. Make your way out and just stand in a straight line and trust God for a miracle. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. And it 
will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Look how many people are trusting God for healings and miracles. I sincerely pray with all my heart that every church and every assembly of God will permit the power of God to operate in their place. It is not a thing of pride to have so many, look at, literally, maybe hundreds of people right outside. There is a long queue and we'll have to minister to these people. It's not God's idea to have one superstar. It's just that many people, especially men of God, are unwilling to press into the dimensions that bring them to the possibilities we are going to do this very very fast all of you who are sitting make sure you are connected and um, you are participating while we are ministering to the sick I want you to pass your prayer request ushers you can walk around please make sure all those outside even those on the roadside make sure that we receive their prayer request because I will be laying hands on it immediately afterwards myself and Pastor Jax will be ministering to you Whatever your challenge is, I want you to believe God. While you're standing, lift your voice and begin to say, Lord, I will not return back with this sickness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I stretch my hands over your people. Let your healing power deliver and save The Lord is healing someone of pile. I'm seeing someone that has suffered pile for a long time. The Lord is healing you right now. You may be in the healing line, but the Lord is healing you right now. Hallelujah. Please make your way. Make your way. It doesn't matter who lays hands on you. There is a corporate anointing in this place. Hallelujah. Please, as soon as we lay hands on you, just go this way very quickly. There are people right to the back outside so that we'll hurry up. And there are still other things we need to do. Praise God. matter what is wrong with you just a laying on of hands the anointing of the spirit is like a drug the moment it enters your body it begins to work and it brings you healing you will notice that some people are standing for healing but as soon as hands are laid on them devils are coming out because they are the causes of these infirmities
back. No, no, no. What's wrong? For how long? You were born like that. Just like that. Let's pray and watch what God will do. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Can we hear it? Father, you've never, you could not walk by your own. You'll fall. Are your legs strong enough? Lord Jesus, is this not why you died? Did they not help you? He came here believing you. You have made this place a place of healing and miracles. Look at the condition of this brother. The legs. Look at me. Leave him. Remove your hand from him. Look at me. Have you tried walking before? Huh? Lift your leg. Try lifting. Lift it. Lift the other one. Lift it. Lift it. You are mighty. Look at me. Just stand behind him so in case he wants to fall, you hold him. Look at me. See, just look at me, not your legs. Look at me. Come. 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 Just come. Don't think of how it will happen. Come. Come. Come, come on, you celebrate are mighty Jesus. On your throne. Completely the legs are open. If you are yet to pass yours, please just do it quickly. Can we all rise? As many as can rise, please, inside and outside. It's a very prophetic moment right now. Jesus, Jesus, my heart will sing. My heart will sing. No other name. No other name. Jesus. 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 My heart will sing. No other name. No other name. Jesus. 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 My heart will sing. Please, those outside, can we have it quickly? No other name. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. We just have five minutes to do this. Listen, I assure you, this is the place where God answers prayers. Hallelujah. I may not be able to minister to everyone individually, but I want you to know that this is a representation of your heart's desire. This is a representation of why you are here. And I'm going to lay my hands as, and as much as possible as a point of contact. All I want you to do is stretch your hands here and begin to receive answers to your prayer. Go ahead, Shibarato Soto Go ahead, stretch your hands as I pray on this. Now God is greater, our God is stronger. Just play the tune while we pray. Stretch your hands and receive. Shaka parata katabaladaba. Lord, we are praying. Please make sure you are praying outside. Stretch your hands towards the screen. Say, Lord, I receive it. I receive it. Lift your hands and stretch your hands here and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart.
let there be testimonies in the name of Jesus turn impossible situations into testimonies Lord we agree we agree we agree in the name of Jesus turn impossible situations to testimonies stretch your hands and keep receiving I receive by faith come on pray all kinds of miracles by the anointing of the Holy Ghost all kinds of miracles Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your glory. Even as these prayer points, Lord, are lifted up to you, Lord. As your people look up to you, Lord. They look up to you, Lord, from whence their help cometh from my Father. I ask you, Lord, that you send angels, Lord. You send answers, my Father. I pray that God doors that are yet to be opened be opened. My Father, I pray for healings, Lord. Healings or terminal cases, Lord, let it be turned. Lord, where people said, there's no way, my Father, we pray that doors, Lord, you create streams in wilderness places. My Father, Lord, for people that cast away, my Father, Lord, you make them renowned by the power of your spirit. We ask for your hand to rest upon your people. Lord, we ask that, Lord, miracles, miracles, Lord, will be given to your people. Answers to prayers, Lord, prayer points that have been pending for many years. We ask that, God, doors be opened, Lord. Let miracles, Lord, flow into this house in the name of Jesus. Testimonies, we are bound in great ways, Lord, unprecedented miracles. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. We ask for healings. We ask that, Lord, people that are insane, you cause them to be sane in the name of Jesus. We pray for contracts that long delayed. Lord, we pray that, Lord, they will be awarded by the power of your spirit in the name of Jesus. And we pray for a shield of protection over your saints, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we ask for a revitalization of spiritual lives by the power of your spirit. Let the fire of God call, come on cold altars in the name of Jesus. Let there be healings and touches in families in the blessed name of Jesus. We give you praise, we give you glory for the great and mighty things you will do amongst us, Lord. We give you praise, blessed Father, for we know all our prayers have been answered by the power of your spirit. We thank you in the name of Jesus we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you believe that your request has been turned into a testimony, I'd like you to shout a loud hallelujah. Shout a loud hallelujah. A loud hallelujah. A loud hallelujah. 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 For many of you, it will be like you are dreaming when you will watch one by one by one by one by one by one in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ it's by the anointing it's not by English burdens are destroyed because of the anointing hallelujah this last segment you've heard me say it again this is the most powerful and most impactful segment if you're not a man of the spirit you may not understand what I'm saying please help them this is the most powerful of this segment right now before we go into this where I begin to prophesy there are two dimensions to prophecy there is the revelatory dimension of prophecy that dimension of prophecy gives you direction but the stronger dimension of prophecy is the creative dimension that's when things that are not become by the power of the spoken word never joke with the power of prophecy that's the power that created the heavens and the earth 
he said i prophesied as i was commanded before we do that very quickly everyone inside and outside there are people here tonight who are saying man of god i want to commit my life to the lord i've seen the miracles i've seen the signs and wonders but my way is not right with the lord you know that right now as you're standing here if the trumpet sounds you're not making heaven you know it right now having a christian name is not the same as having a relationship with jesus there are some you've given your heart to the lord at one time please help those under the anointing i tell you there will be a powerful impartation right now i sense a heavy anointing on me already that's why i'm doing this very quickly now if you are here please don't delay us you are saying i want to return home for whatever reason you found yourself living the ways of god and you are saying lord i have heard your word and i'm not ashamed to make jesus my lord there are people in this auditorium young and old there are people by all the overflows right to the roadside no matter how far you are hearing my voice it should not be too far right now i'll just count one to five please run like you are running away from death run like there's fire on the mountain one inside and outside the devil is a liar tonight don't let any spirit stop you Tori. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Keep coming, God bless you. You have won it all for me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You have won the victory. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. You have won. Keep coming, keep coming. Please hurry up and catch up with us. So, so deep with you. So deep with you. We give you praise, Sasa give you joy. One more time, Sasa give you Don't sit back there when you hear the voice of the Lord. Sasa give you I appreciate every one of you for coming out this is the way to the cross listen no matter what you achieve in life if your eternal destiny is not secured it says this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life but he said this life is in his son until you have the son you do not have that life lift your right hand forget about who is looking at you and in the name of Jesus I want you to pray this prayer from the depth of your heart you are not reciting a poem it's not a special number this is a decision there's one of you here you smoke all these kinds of things Igbo and the rest huh? but as you pray this prayer the power is broken over your life say after me as loud as you can from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart and with everything within me this night I make Jesus Lord of my life I repent of my sins I declare that eternal life comes into my spirit I am born again I'm a child of God from today the power of sin the power of the flesh is broken over me my past is gone and it's over forever I am a new creation in Christ in the name of Jesus the power of sin is broken over my life in the name of Jesus I receive of your life 
in jesus name i pray now i stretch my hands over you and i declare the power of sin is broken over your life in the name of jesus every yoke that has tied you down lets you go forever in the name of jesus i declare that is a new season for you everything that is a habit and a challenge in your life i release you from it right now every covenant and ordinance of darkness that is the foundation of your trouble by the blood of jesus it is wiped away i set you free i break you free from every wrong association that keeps you in sin in the name of jesus christ i pray hallelujah i want to congratulate all of you for making this decision this is the greatest decision you would ever make in your life hallelujah now very quickly so that you catch up with us in this prophetic session i want you to follow the gentlemen waving their hands they will have your details and then we'll follow you up very closely praise the lord just follow them koinonia celebrate them as they go all of you this way this way just follow the gentlemen now everybody rise please i want you to receive this prophetic word this is the seventh month and the bible says revive thy work in the midst of the years hallelujah there is a mystery with the seventh month is the time where god perfects all things as i prophesy to you please i want you to know that there is an anointing that makes it happen hallelujah listen listen don't, don't mind all that nonsense one way to conquer satan is to ignore him all of that rubbish uh, is is the devil works in the realm of the senses by the time you focus all your attention on this drama and these things you will waste your time i know you are trying as ushers just stand around satan does not have authority i want you to know that there is an anointing manifestations are already signs that his power is broken but satan knows that we walk in the realm of the flesh so he begins to act around your mind to distract you when you ignore satan is one way of conquering him it does not have the capacity to continue all of this nonsense are you getting my point so this is teaching you so that tomorrow you don't end up wasting your time with all this rubbish and all this drama praise the lord lift your hands i prophesied as i was commanded you are Yahweh you are seated on the throne you are Yahweh seated on the throne you are Yahweh you are seated on the throne father in the name of Jesus I'm praying right now by the ministry of angels are they not ministering spirits send to minister to they that be the heirs of salvation I pray for you every weakness in your life that weakness dies tonight in the name of Jesus every weakness in your life that weakness leaves you tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I prophesy to you that Red Sea you are standing before by the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this second half of the year. An anointing comes upon you and I prophesy cross every Red Sea. Cross every Red Sea. Cross every Red Sea in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for every student here. Oh, for there is a spirit in man and the inspiration make it men of understanding. I'm praying for you. Some of you, listen. As I pray now, some of you will literally feel like oil being poured upon your head is an impartation of knowledge right now oh god i release an anointing to change the story of students at the count of three let it fall right now one two three take it take it take it take it now 
take it now that anointing receive it for exploits shaka -ta -ta -ta. inside and outside take it for exploits 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 hallelujah everything called stagnation in your life that has forced you to stay in one position while you should be moving right now in the name of jesus and by the power of prophecy i command stagnation to end now 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 my goodness something is happening to your destiny every night season in your life every wilderness experience that has refused to break forth into the day i speak to you right now your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally hallelujah there is something called favor i don't know if you know it but there is something called favor when the favor of god is upon a man your looks your background your qualifications no longer matter let an anointing of favor right now i see at least 100 people 100 people like fire hundred people right now receive it receive it favor 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 upon your life favor 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 parekete embratata lakata i prophesy by an apostolic anointing favor 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 everyone holding anything that should be given to you for the next level i don't care where they are but i sound an alarm in the spirit that in this month we're entering called august may that be the month where you receive the keys of the next level receive the keys of the next level the mysteries of the next level every spiritual blindness shababa things happen around you you cannot see blood of spiritual vision i pray right now many of you will see like flashes of light as i'm praying right now you will see literally like flashes of light your eyes are opening right now right now right now right now right now by the power of the holy ghost blindness spiritual blindness spiritual blindness be free from it right now be free from it right now be free from it right now hallelujah there are many of us here dreams and visions are prophetic channels where we get insight and direction but for many of us our dreams and visions have either been corrupted or it's no longer there the bible says they will dream dreams it says they will see visions lift your hands 
there will be an, a restoration anointing right now i just want you to shout i receive listen many things will happen to you many of you is an activation of the realm of dreams and visions where god will start showing you the blueprint for the next level right now in the name of jesus at the count of three as you shout i receive let there be an impartation upon your dream life upon spiritual visions one two three now you receive it receive it restoration of fire fire dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams hallelujah he says what do you have in your house and she said nothing except a jar of oil i want to prophesy upon your gift it's one thing to be gifted but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed there are many of you the gift you have can bring bread to your table but nobody is seeing it it's one thing to be gifted it's one thing to be skilled but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed thou anointed my head with oil and it makes my cup to overflow i prophesy to you whatever has covered your gift whatever has made your gift barren right now in the name of jesus i anoint your gift now i anoint your skill now i anoint your gift now creativity creativity i release it i release that anointing creativity skill expertise competence proficiency in the name of jesus christ listen anybody who has said it's not your time to manifest that you always remain on the background you clap for others but you are not cursed it's god's desire that every man will also come to the lamplight i pray for you whatever has kept you behind right now in the name of jesus i command let the light be on you let the light of glory be on you. Hallelujah. Everything you have tried by your strength to do and you have been unable to do throughout half of this year, you have tried by your strength. I'm releasing grace upon your life right now. Go back to that same thing and watch how God will bless you through it. I pray for every ministry here from glory to glory every church represented from honor to honor new dimensions of the anointing in the name of Jesus Christ every business here is time to shine come on every business here I strengthen your hand arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine lift your hands one last prayer listen i want to activate the gift of the spirit without the gift of the spirit upon your life your life will be barren and unfruitful it says for i long to see you that i may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye be established i pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the Lord himself something is about to happen to your life right now as I speak father I come under this apostolic anointing right now across the length and breadth 
in this auditorium and outside at the count of three let there be an activation of spiritual gifts one two three take it take it gift of healing word of knowledge gift of prophecy 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 i activate the prophetic i open your eyes spiritual gifts endowments of the spirit i declare that you are supernatural beginning from tonight in the name of jesus everywhere you go you are supernatural let the anointing upon this house follow you like a shadow i prophesy to you every anointing that is upon this house from today let it follow you like a shadow whatever the anointing has brought to this house let it bring it to your life hallelujah lift your hands and give him praise father we give you all the praise I assure you you will know that this miracle service was unusual you will know many of you right from this night tomorrow will not reach you start having your testimonies right from this night right from this night favor alerts calls i mean connections mysterious happenings i speak to the spiritual borders of your destiny and in the name of jesus i command that every gate that has been closed the bible says your gate shall be continually open so you have a gate your gate shall be continually open to receive the forces of the gentiles i pray for you in the name that is above all names let everything in your life start working for you i command the earth to work for you i command the wind to work for you I command the stars to work for you everything that is a disappointment in your life I change it tonight to a testimony Hallelujah. if you're worshiping with us for the first time keep standing everybody there are many people outside let me speak upon your life dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kotos kete branda kata pa kotos koto pre kete kete kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.